What's up guys, Joe here, welcome back to my channel and today we are back with Uno X career mode and today we have Paris Nice coming up first before maybe some other races as well. Checking out the calendar then, we do have Paris Nice, like I said, really interesting one. Uh, we then really have the start of the classic season, starting with Milano San Remo. I think we'll try and squeeze that into today's episode. And then we have all of the Belgian classics. Really exciting time of this season. Kind of really when you get into cycling, March, April, ahead of the first Grand Tours. And some of you guys were asking about specific ride objectives in the previous episode. So you can see Rasmus Tiller on screen. He's targeting Milano San Remo, LBL and the Giro. That's kind of his early season objectives. And this is what I've done for pretty much every single rider. If I go to, for example, Magnus Court, I've really given everyone objectives for the first half of the season. He's targeting Dwarves Door, Pyrie Bay and the Tour de France later on. Um, if we go to maybe Tobias, he's targeting the Giro currently. I'll scroll through all the riders right now just so you can see uh, the current states of the objectives. Pause on anyone if you want a closer look. Now also regarding the planner, again, I've planned out the entirety of the first half of the season, which does mean I've given our Giro and our Tour de France lineups the go ahead. So you can see on screen right here, Tobias Harland Johansson, Andreas Kron, Halvorsen, Sharma Tiller, we have Anders Johansson, Storna Mitte and Morten Hulgaard currently going to the Giro d'Italia. If we skip to the Tour de France, Christophe Hulgaard, uh, Tobias, I wasn't sure whether to take him. Currently, he's not set to go to the Tour de France and instead, We'll give our GC leadership to Matthias Skelmosa. Uh, we have Magnus Court, Captain Price, a couple other riders as well. But that's the current state of our Giro and Tour de France lineups. Let me know what you think. Should we change this around? Um, and yeah, let me know in the comments what you think of our provisional Grand Tour lineups. And it's Mikhail Finn, the Norwegian, who I mentioned in the previous episode. I spotted him at, I think it was Le Sama. But look at his well-rounded attributes. So well-rounded, I would love to sign this guy next season. As well as that, uh, our scout said his potential is pretty good as well. So definitely, uh, we have Mikhail Finn on the shortlist for next season. So something else I've done before we head to Paranis is sign a fifth trainer. That's right, we have Dominic Link on the team. Only an international reputation. We have so much of our salary already going to trainers, but I swear this is fixed. So beforehand, we didn't have any riders who like the traditional style. Maybe it's because we signed Kristoff, but um, now we have four riders who like traditional. We didn't have any about a year ago. So our new coach is going to take over these four riders. All right, there we go. Everyone should now have a trainer suited to their style and hopefully we'll see the attributes of the squad as a whole really start to grow from this point onwards. I haven't seen too much to start this season. Hopefully we'll see some throughout the next few months. So with all that out of the way, let's take a look at Paris Nice, shall we? Eight stages, of course, mostly flat by the looks of things. We start with a prologue, a couple stages, perhaps with crosswinds, mainly for the sprinters though. Stage five, the first big GC day on paper. Stage six, another flatter stage, but then uh, we head to Nice in a really exciting stage. Look at this one, really, really fun on paper again before a 10k time trial up cold as to conclude things. And as one of you guys suggested, I'm pretty sure the reason we weren't invited to Strada this year is because, again, the Italian organisers don't like us. They were too scared to have us at their race. And Mike Woods is the man to win this season. Anyway, we arrive in Paris and Nice. Taking a look at our squad, we have Christoph, who is our lead sprinter. In the GC, it's Matthias Skelmosa coming to Paris and Nice, of course, before heading to the Tour de France, hopefully as our leader later in this season as well and we have a lot of very good flat riders really important at Paris Nice with the potential of so many crosswinds and what a start it is for Scalmosa a plus five day could we even win this stage with the guy that's up him maybe to 88 but looking at the other riders here Alaphilippe Tige Benut for quick step with Remco Van Der Poel Carapaz is here Roglic as well for Jumbo Visma, Godou, Landa for Uskatel, Eskedi. I've been looking forward to having him here and racing him in person for his old team. But Skelmosa trying to use all his energy. I think we're going a little too early here. Let's see, 1.5k still to go. 
But anyway, here he comes into the final kilometers. Let's see if he can take the best time. Surely he can on this day. 27 seconds already. Anyway, just to see the full start list, it's on screen for you right there. So we are some way into this time trial right now. Tobias Foss crossing the line, one of our closest challenges maybe, but he's 19 seconds down. Quieto is up next. Let's see if he can defeat Skirmosa. No, he cannot. That was a really good time, as you would expect on a plus five day. I've just noticed a certain someone on course though. The moment of truth then, do we hold off Remco Evnepoel, the pre-stage favourite? Yes, we do. Jimmy Johansson on a fantastic plus four day as well. He's across the line in the top five. So Rowan Dennis on course next, another massive favourite and we hold him off. I think we could win this stage, you know. So we only have four riders left on course, including a certain Primoz Roglic. Let's see if he beats us. He's 39th place. He is out of form clearly this year. And Carapaz surely won't beat us. We have Van der Poel and Alaphilippe on course as well. And I'm pretty sure Skelmoster has won stage one here. I think it would be fair to say that was unexpected. We take yellow with Skelmoster. 73 prologue. On a 6k time trial, that is absurd. We're in yellow at Paris Nice. And barring any crosswinds today, it definitely looks like a stage for Alex Christoph and the sprinters. And I really don't know if you can tell, but Skelmosa is currently in his fitness peak. This is his early season objective and another plus five day. Please, Skelmosa, hold this form until the mountains. So early phases of the lead out, I can see Yolo Kamesa, Connor Swift, Lorenzo Manzan and Jake Stewart are there. For Iolo Kometa, we have uh, UAE Team Emirates for Ackerman and Gaviria. David Decker is further back. We have Stan Van Tritt, Biniam Gamay sprinting for Group Armour FDJ. Anyway, 5k to go. Let's boost things up to maybe 95 with Jonas Widerberg. Don't get blocked by your teammate. Now Decker and Stewart definitely in good positions. I'm not sure if Gaviria or Ackerman are going to be sprinting for UAE Team Emirates. Let's see. Let's maybe go a little earlier than I hoped for with Larson trying to find some space. We don't have any of that right now, but here comes Kristoff into the final kilometer. I'm pretty sure I've gone too early here, but have we got the jump on everyone? Have we got the jump on everyone? It's going to be so, so close. And we lose it on the line too. Of course, Tim Muller out of nowhere to win it at the last. And a bad day for Rigo Aran. He is going to lose upwards of three minutes on the leaders. Not a bad day then. I thought we were going to hold on, but we have to settle for a top three place. And another flat one today, and can we stop Tim Malia is the main question. Although thinking about it, those kind of long, powerful sprints are definitely the type that suit Christoph the best with that higher sprint and relatively lower acceleration stats. So maybe that's the tactic we need to do, try and make the sprints as difficult as possible to suit our big boy, Alex, Christoph and Skelmoser. It's a plus five again. This man is hotter than Kevin Durant right now for the Nets. Unbelievable stuff. Okay, seven kids go. We're currently on a little bit of an uphill drag, about two and a half percent, enough to call it a false flat, I would say. Maybe we can just increase it a little more to make the purest sprinters of all really suffer. And of course, Tim Malia maybe suffer a little bit as well. Now we're coming downhill. Widerberg and Anders Garset is going to be our lead out man again today. And again, it's Yolo Kometa in a really good position. Connor Swift is the man to do that for the Brits. Where is Malia? He's much further back on the wheel. Van Tricht for now, 2.5. K to go. I think Anders Garcet can go and try and find Kristoff some space who can sprint maybe under the Flam Rouge. Let's go again. Alex Kristoff past Mads Pedersen going for the line. And Alex Kristoff, is he going to be denied here? No, he is not. Alex Kristoff is a stage winner at Paris Nice. You love to see it. Two out of three for the team. There you go, Alex Kristoff, a beautiful stage win, beautiful lead out and a beautiful victory. And again, the flat stages continue and another chance for Kristoff today. So I've been sleeping a bit here and we have 4K to go until the line. Kristoff though, in the perfect position, Gaviria in a great position as well. And Florian Seneschal, I would say in the best position, literally on our wheel. We do have an uphill kick though to the line, which we definitely need to stay aware of. Let's try and keep our position until the very last moment then, 1.4K to go. Now Kristoff has to go. We've lost some positioning though before the line and we've gone too late here, way too late in the end. And David Decker will win for Trek Segafredo. Oh, just played that wrong. Really overrated that uphill kick to the line. So it's not even a top five for us today. 
Yeah, that's a shame. That's an annoying one. We should have done better there. And looking at the green jersey after the sprinting stages, it is Tim Malia just ahead of Christoph with David Decker in third place. But of course, Skelmosa has had the yellow jersey this entire time. And well, we're going to need one of those fantastic days to hold on to that jersey today. The likes of Roglic and Vingegaard for Yumbo. We have Godou, Carapaz, Lanza, all suiting this uphill finish over 200k as well. And man, have we been lucky so far. Skelmosa is on fire. A plus five day again. Let's try and defend yellow. And we have allowed a moderately dangerous breakaway up the road. You can see some of the names in this group. Rico Oran is here after he fell three minutes down. Remember, day is 40 seconds down. He is right there in GC. And he is in this group. David Dela Cruz, particularly dangerous as well. And the Ineos Grenadiers keen to control things today and I'm thinking that either Pavel Sivakov I'm gonna say Pavel Sivakov over Ben Tullet is their leader because surely Carapaz wouldn't be uh, this far forward in the peloton right now he'd be further back with Pavel Sivakov who is second overall and so this race is only just starting to explode and we've had an attack have we Rudy Millard Alaphilippe looking very aggressive early on and they're off the front right now we need to control Julian Alaphilippe of course but not quite sure what's going on here. And so 12k to go, the climb to Chabaret is about to commence. In fact, the tempo is absolutely huge right now. Let's try and stay to the front. Roglic is to our left though, um, and you can see Carapaz is done. So he's definitely not leading Ineos here. I think we're looking okay for energy. And there we go, early on it's Peo Bilbao following David Godou up the road, Emmanuel Bookman as well, Lander there he is for Uskatel, Uskedi, uh, Roglic trying to make his move too, let's try and follow them, just slowly drag ourselves back up to them and there you go, we're back to the front, I think we can just go 65 or something. And it's Bilbao and Mikel Lander looking to advance again. I think Skelmos is looking brilliant for energy here today. Pete Mogensen is going to do a little bit of tempoing on the front. Mikel Lander has nothing and pale Bilbao giving everything to stay ahead. But still, we have five and a half K to go. Mogensen is done. There goes Julian Alaphilippe. And now I think the yellow jersey is going to try and set off after Julian Alaphilippe. Let's try and create some gaps here. So on the road, we have a bunch of riders behind four at the heads of the race. Alaphilippe is struggling to hold the wheel of Skelmosa. And if I attack, I'm sure he cannot follow. I'm sure he cannot follow, but he tries. The former world champion, what an effort. David Godou is struggling. And look at Alaphilippe trying to fight. He is fighting so hard. But Skelmosa, he kicks again, trying to create some separation. And we have just about done so on Alaphilippe and Bilbao. Skelmosa is on electric form today as Remco is tempoing in his teammate up the road. Brilliant tactics as always from Remco and De Koenig. Literally Remco has bridged to Alaphilippe. Remco kicks away but there is no catching Matthias at Skelmose Jensen today. No matter Remco's efforts he is not going to get close to the Dane. What a ride. Let's sprint to the line. Matthias Skelmose Jensen wins stage five of Paris-Nice destroying Remco Evenepoel and everyone else left in his wake. Crazy stage, but a crazy performance by Skelmosa, dropping all but two riders outside a minute. What a rider this man is turning into early on in his Unoet's career. I mean, look at the quality of riders we have behind Roglic as well. Strange stage, to be honest. Moritz Lamatink somehow uh, finished in the top five on a GC day. But now looking to the GC, we lead everyone by Remco by over a minute. And importantly, we get a rest from the GC as we head to Rastu in a flatter stage for the sprinters. Oh my word, what are the chances of this? Skelmosa has fallen and so has Remco. So has Remco. They both fall at the same time and both our squads are going to drop everyone back surely with 30k to go. I think we have enough time. Come on boys, get back to him. And I'll tell you what, the stress here is not ideal because Quickstep have only dropped Remy Cavagna back and our guys are struggling actually to get Skelmosa back to the peloton. Someone must be tempoing so hard at the front oh my word come on let's get back ASAP and luckily 18k to go I think this is the moment we just about 
get back to the peloton but that was the stress we could have done without and so 5k to go the crisis has officially been averted because Skelmosa is back towards the front of the group but our guys are not ready to support Alex Kristoff and he is completely out of position choosing the wrong wheel entirely maybe David Decker let's try and get onto his wheel with only 3k to go but we're getting blocked in massively it's not going to be a winning sprint for Kristoff today I'm afraid guys oh I mean what can we do? I mean, we cannot get through this group of riders. Let's see who's going to win the stage at the front. Gaviria, Ethan Hayter, and it will be David Decker. The wheel I wanted to follow couldn't get there. Wins today's stage ahead of Biniam Gamay. So ultimately, everyone finishes in the same group. We're nowhere near stage victory. We lose ground in the green jersey, but at this point, we're all in to protect Skelmosa. And today we head into Nice for what is going to be a crucial day because remember, the final stage is the cold airs time trial so if we can gain any time on Remco here today because he's going to excel in that final time trial it would be crucial oh man but this is our first real low moment in the GC battle it's a minus one day for Skelmosa in yellow so I was thinking about trying to attack Remco at the beginning of the stage it's all about defense though versus this man today and to be honest we just don't have the riders to ride on the front of the peloton today meaning the breakaway now have seven minutes and the virtual yellow jersey on the shoulders of Remy Rojas so I think De Koenig or Quickstep Vu is up to you guys really if you want to make this difficult for Remco. Moritz Lamerting, the next rider to crash. And guys, there have been so many crashes today. Treacherous descents, treacherous roads, almost at every switchback we're seeing riders fall. And look at this, Roman Bardet and his Team DSM team, Roman Bardet is setting up two weights for Moritz Lamerting in the GC. Drink it in, guys, because you won't see that again. And I'll tell you guys, Skelmosa is struggling to even hold the wheels of the Peloton right now. And only Mogensen is left after Nicholas Larson. And we're down to under 50 riders by the top of this climb, I think. It is getting really tough. And it is Quick Step Vu on the front working for Remco. And I'll tell you what, Stan Van Tricht has done God's work for Remco today. Finally, he is now done. He has caused us massive issues. We now need to get over the cold. Sam Roche with Remco as Van Trick kicks again. What a ride he is having. He is 65 miles in. And I think Remco should probably choose to attack us on this climb, the Cold Sam Roche, but he's not choosing to. Skirmosa is going to keep Mogensen over the top and it is going to come down to the final climb, I think. Here we go then, Van Trix again winds things up. We still have Alaphilippe, we still have Tij Benut and we still, of course, have Remco Evenepoel. Here's the man we are watching like a hawk today. But to be honest, the attacks just aren't coming so far. We've pushed Van Trix out the back ourselves, and we're even thinking about going on the offensive now. There have been, there's just been no one brave enough to attack us, which is strange because we don't have any riders and any domestiques really, bar of course Pete Mogensen, who is clinging on to his final gasps of energy. And so ultimately, coming into Nice, it's going to be 33 riders. We still have the likes of Barangini. It's another crash. It was Roman Bardet there. Or oh, sorry, it was Maxime Chevalier. Further back, Roman Bardet must have crashed. I said it was a treacherous day, but Christophe Laporte is still here. We still have some sprinters who will surely decide today's stage. I think Michael Matthews is here as well. Ethan Hayter is another with a great chance today. Only four k to go. I have decided just to mark Remco. Make sure there's no funny business. No strange crazy Remco attacks in the final kilometers so Skelmosa is going to stay there let's see who takes the stage though and it is Alaphilippe and oh Vlasov is leading Alaphilippe to victory here surely this is an easy W for Julian Alaphilippe let's sprint ourselves and watch Alaphilippe come to victory easily in Nice Julian Alaphilippe wins stage seven but crucially we hold on to yellow on a minus one day and Paul Moritz Lamertink never made it back to the Peloton so then we have 30 37 seconds over Remco. He's the rider we need to watch on Col Des. Are we going to give up that time to Super Remco? I hope not. Here it is Col Des and 9.7 kilometers at absurd percentages. Let's go. We really have an intriguing top 10 at this year's Pyrenees. Godzu, Roglic, Vlasov, Ethan Hater in seventh place. Cool to see Sivakov, Jonas Vingegaard in that beautiful. Danish jersey. There is Alaphilippe. Bilbao. Remco is underway. 
and we can't give away more than 37 seconds and it's a zero race day for Skelmosa and if you guys know this TC there can be massive massive gaps ah, and it's so important to have a good mountain stat. I worry that we could be in trouble. Remco then across the first split he's 36 seconds down it's a very poor first split then for Remco Evenepoel. Let's see how far down we are. 42 seconds. Oh my word. I'm seeing the times of Roglic and Vinkegaard and they're like 1 minute 44 down is Vinkegaard. Maybe we need to be careful but currently we're just about holding on to our lead provisionally to Remco. So I don't know why but I am worried that Vinkegaard could win this race. Remco under the Flam Rouge. He has just a few hundred meters left. Let's see how far down he is. 59 seconds down. It's not a good time trial for Remco Evenepoel. I think we're going to lose to him on the day. But overall, I really hope we've done enough to win Paris Nice. We have done it. Matthias Skelmose Jensen does not win the stage. That prize goes to Jonas Vingegaard today. But if we cut to the next one, Matthias Skelmose is the winner of Paris-Nice. Let's go. What a race. What a race, man. And if Remco had a good day, he would have beaten us at Paris-Nice. Jonas Vinkegaard, if he was any closer, he would have done it. He cut the gap from over a minute, and f I think it was a minute 44, to less than 30 seconds. What a ride there. But Remco holds on for a second and Skelmosa wins Paris-Nice by 22 seconds. I am so happy with this race. Couple of stage wins, no other jerseys bar the white jersey, of course. Oh, that was so fun. And as it's that time of year, it's Christmas. Time to give a little to others. Uh, I think we'll play a couple more races. Maybe just Milan San Remo. I'll probably um, play these three races in Belgium and France off camera. If they're good, I'll show them. If not, we'll cut straight to Milan San Remo. And to be honest with you, they weren't really worth showing. I'll show you the results quickly on screen instead. But we are here for Milano San Remo and Wout van Aert is the favourite. We have a former winner in our ranks, I believe, in Alexander Christoph. But the two riders who have been targeting this race for our team are Magnus Kortz and Rasmus Tiller. Nonetheless, you can see our squad is super powered for Milano San Remo, and I cannot wait to go for our first monuments. But I tell you what, guys, it's Andy Cron again on absurd form. This man could be our leader, or Rasmus Tiller, even Magnus Court. We have options for sure to attack on the Poggio later on. Mini breakaway, of course, we're not there. They should be reeled in pretty comfortably. So I wouldn't normally say this is good tactics at Milan San Remo, but 70k to go. This is a slightly different variant. I'm going to try and really attack this descent over the top now. Let's press it to 95. Hulagard and Ida Anderson domestics today. Let's really hammer this descent and the breakaway almost caught already. And already in this descent, we are creating splits. 32 suddenly are all that remain at the front. Hopefully, we've caught some big favourites out. I can already see Giacomo Nizzolo is behind. All right then, breakaway caught. And we are trying to continue this effort. It's going to be difficult, but I think we can spend Hulagard and Anderson at least trying this and yeah 115 riders still not with us so again cutting to the heli cam anderson and hulgard still all over the front of this race and still just 59 are at the front we're creating groups all over the road this is absolutely ideal i didn't expect this to go so well and so most of the riders are now back as we enter the foot of the Chapressa, but hopefully uh, we have really tired some guys out. And here we launch our first card. Rasmus Tiller is going to try and attack on the Chapressa. Hopefully he can maybe draw out some stronger riders here. The likes of Ethan Hayter maybe. But Tiller quickly caught. Ethan Hayter is flying. Fabio Fellina, he was so good in the previous season as well. And now we're seeing the numbers in this group really come down. We're not going anywhere on the Chapressa at this tempo. Oh my word, Wout van Aert is behind. I'm not sure if he crashed, but 21k to go. And the pre-race favourite, the leading favourite, is well behind as we are on the descent of the Chapressa and speeding towards the Poggio. So the Poggio approaching. I think my plan is to try and conserve Quartz and Tiller for a sprint. I think probably Tiller is our best option in a sprint today, believe it or not, and try and attack with Andy Cron on the 
Poggio, which is swiftly approaching. All right then, Christoph has really given himself up, putting our guys in a really good position. He's won this race before. He won't be doing it again. We sign him to be a teammate as well. And now he can maybe go up to 95. Let's go like this. Maintain position with Magnus Court 99. And here goes Andy Cron. Here goes Andy Cron. He's trying to win Milan, San Remo, Askren, Simmons. They all try to follow as well. But Andy Cron is flying on the Poggio as we speak. Simmons and Askren, they're not quite there with, I think, Tosh van der Sander doing the work. We only need to follow behind. So 6k to go. Can we hold on to this buffer? Courts and Tiller looking good, but Andy Cron is now in the descent and heading into San Remo with about 11 seconds. 4k to go. Can we hold on, guys? This is tense. Magnus Court getting the wheel of, I think, will go for Matthew van der Poel. Tiller, though, is so far out of position. There is Caleb Bjorn. I'd love to get there if I can, but up the road, Andy Cron is trying to hold on, but I don't think he's going to like this. He's going to have to sprint early, and here comes Rasmus Tiller sprinting behind. Have I gone too early? Are we going to catch Kron? I'm not sure. Oh my word, I've bottled it. I've completely bottled it. I've completely bottled Sam Ramo and Matthew Van Der Poel is going to win. It didn't make my mind up. And in the end, guys, we're going to be nowhere. What a chance today. And I've royally messed it up. God damn, that one is an absolute killer. For a second, I thought we were going to catch Kron. I thought Kron was going to win. So I think I stopped with Tiller when I should have been sprinting and that lost all our momentum. But I think today, Rasmus Tiller or Andy Kron should have won Milan San Remo. Instead, it was Matthew Van Der Poel. And well, guys, that will conclude this one. Hopefully you enjoyed it, despite that little bit of a disappointing ending. Nonetheless, another really successful episode. We'll check our rankings and stuff at the end of the next one but coming up in the next one we do have the Belgian classics I think for the first time taking on all of them and we will conclude the episode with another monument in the Ronde van Vlaanderen cannot wait for that and I hope you guys can't either if you enjoyed today smash that like button down below hit subscribe if you're new and I will see you in the next one